Hey, it's the Dan Wilson and Tokyo podcast, your one stop podcast for everything Japan and Japanese culture. Hi! Kindabu. How's it going? Today, I have a very special guest, a friend, a fencer, and an absolute baller. He was on, he is on the Japan national fencing team and participated in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Kaito Streets. Thank you for having me. Yo. So excited to be here. How you doing, man? Good. Dude, we, I mean, we're like 10 seconds in, and I'm getting a little sweaty in here. <laughs> this shit is no joke. That's literally my life. You know, you don't have to do anything. You start sweating. Well, Everywhere, too. Um, Dude, I feel safe, though. Yeah, from, feel- from bees. <laughs> <laughs> do I really look like a beekeeper? Yeah. I feel like I can go to prison in this and like even I'll get shanked a lot, but I'll feel like none of it will go through. I feel kind of safe. I like it. Yeah. um, It's good protection. Yeah. And they they can't get straight to my butthole. They got to go through a few (laughs) things. They got to earn it. They they, they (laughs) definitely got to earn it, dog. And um, when I was trying this on, um, I didn't know how to put on the, the top part. He, he made me put it through, like, the leg. I don't know if you can see this. It's going to zoom in right in your crotch right like, now. Like, right here? Like this? It's like a thong, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a thong. And he goes, Kai's like, yo, this is the part that protects your, your wiener. And it's, like, made out of cloth, dude. This <laughs> thing will not protect your wiener from anything. And, you know, I have, I've had first experience with that at the Olympics. Bro. Bro. <laughs> That's that thing you, uh... You kind of blew up for the guy to get uh, your penis fenced on. <laughs> I used the wrong saber for that match, <laughs> you know. You could probably show the video and during the, you know, you can clip it in. But Oh, dude, for sure. Yeah, so uh, the here's famous the famous Olympic video that had me get famous, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yo <laughs> And the best part is They show it in slow motion Oh hell yeah let's see it Oh Oh, oh you just took it directly on there Yeah Oh yeah S- so it looks like he actually like had a clear whack, but it mm-hmm. felt like a flick to me. And I, I, I felt the broness when you went down. You gave him like a little tap on the calf, like yo, I know you didn't mean to yeah. just sm- like slash my dong, but yeah, like yeah, yo, yeah. and he was also like my my bad, bro. Yeah, he knew right away too where yeah. he hit, and so he was like, "I'll oh, do my bad." And I was like, "Dude, no worries." That was that was peak sportsmanship. I wanted to go viral, like winning a medal at the Olympics, but uh-huh. it didn't work out that way. But yeah, I got hit in the, you know, you can say dick and balls same time. Oh, you say oh, okay, word. It was it was both. It was oh. like a flick of both everything. Word. And so, um, yeah, my opponent went kind of low, and thankfully that's off target. Uh huh. So I got the point. Uh. Uh-huh. So in the video. I'm like celebrating at first, uh-huh. but then the pain kicked in like two seconds later and I go down. <laughs> and so, yeah, I kind of made that like a kind of like a TikTok video uh-huh. and I didn't think too much about it. I just kind of posted it the next day. Uh-huh. And it was like a trending soundtrack, or like a sound during that time. So uh-huh. I kind of attached it together Yeah. and literally made it on the bus on the way to like practice the next day uh-huh. at the Olympics. Yeah. And... Next thing I know, it's like blown up. And it's going on like uh, E News and like <laughs> famous people commenting on my video and people oh, commenting, sick. How's your dick? Like all this. And yeah, to be famous for the guy that, you know, took a saber to the nuts <laughs> at the Olympics, that's pretty raw, dude. Yeah, I'll take whatever, you know. As long as, you know, I can promote the sport of fencing. If it's, <laughs> if it's, if it's uh, through humor or entertainment, you know, to get more eyeballs on fencing, that's, uh, that's awesome for me. You know, not just for me, but. The sport, I think. Yeah, dude. Um, So when we hung out at the bar and we're drinking a few beers, I asked a lot about fencing. Because, yo, that's this sport is pretty foreign to me. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, we were having a good time drinking beers, and I forgot everything you told me <laughs> about fencing. Yeah, we had some, you know, quite a lot of drinks, so I, I, don't bl- I don't blame you. I know we had a good talk. Yeah, yeah. We talked for, like, I don't know, three, four hours? Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was a good time. We were getting hyped up, yeah. and then, like... I wanted to learn more about, like, Japanese comedy, so it was, like, a really good talk. Yeah. But I don't blame you. Yeah, fencing is such a unique sport. Uh-huh. Is it getting hot in there? Dude, like... Like Nelly. Yeah. But um, I'm actually going to get a sip of water real quick. Yeah. Oh, you, you, look, you look like a fencer. Dude. I, does it look dude, like you you're, look like me. Does it look like you're looking in the mirror? Yeah, dude. What the hell? We have the same facial hair. Like, hey, you want to go to practice tomorrow and like act like you're me and just... And you show up in, in your gear? Yeah, so I could take a day off. So you're an elite athlete, all right? Olympic level. And you think you could just let a guy... Do the same training regimen. When do you think they would notice at what at what point stage of the training? <laughs> Just some. Dude, I drink every day, pretty much. Um, maybe the warm up already. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you you know you were an athlete, so um, I think once you start doing fancy movements, they'll probably realize. Um, dude, I don't, I don't even know. I like I have so many questions. I don't even know where to start, dog. But uh, first off, dude, how dope is this? For all the people watching, yo, what's this called and where does it go on the uniform? So this is this uh, joint. So this is called a lame, and this is like where, what you see people get, you know, the lights come on. This is where the target is. So that's why it's like made out of shiny material. Uh huh. It's conductive. Mermaid so, scales. Exactly. Where? It's very rare. <laughs> <laughs> but this goes over your the top. So the white jacket you have on, yeah. this goes over it. Okay. And then we have a bunch, like, couple wires or one wire, um, go through your body. I didn't bring the wire, but that connects to the machine. And so when this, the saber here, touches oh. this, uh-huh. or the mask, or this glove right here, the glove is actually made out of the same material. Uh huh. Then it registers through the machine, and the light goes on. Word. So did the light go on when the saber hit your chin ching? It did not because that's off target. <laughs> <laughs> Word. If it did, then I have a really good ching ching, you know. So yeah. conductive ching ching. Very, very uh, uh, electro sensitive ching ching. But I like to say so. One of them electric eels. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this is like a different material. The uh-huh. what the the white the stuff you're wearing right now is purely for protection. So it's like a made out of thicker material, and that's why it's kind of getting hot, right? And uh, you're kind of less mobile. Dude, so I watched some videos. Uh, I did my research a little bit, mm. and you you're moving around, dude. It's like, it's like lightning fast, like pop it, like like it goes like. Yeah, yeah. And now that I'm wearing this and I feel stiff, it's super impressive. Yeah. How fast you move, with this gear on. Yeah. So, it definitely takes away some mobility and uh-huh. speed a little bit. Yeah. Because you know, there's some I don't know exactly how many grams or kilos the whole thing is, but. Uh-huh. I mean, you get used to it, you know. Where? I've been do- wearing that outfit for, I don't know, 20 years. Oh, shit. So I've been fencing for, what, 21 years? So I, I'm used to it. And even the mask, right? It probably feels heavy for you. Dude, super heavy. Yeah, it's normal for me. Yeah. Um, it's got but, them thick neck muscles. But you never get used to the heat. It gets hot in there, uh-huh. for sure. Um, Yo, do they, like, do they air conditioning, like, the the place, like, where you where you fight other countries? It depends on the country. Oh, word. And so some competitions, um, if it's, like, well-organized, yeah, we're going to have good AC. Uh-huh. Um, but sometimes, um, you know, for example, if you go to, like, a lot of African countries. Oh, when you fence Ghana, they ain't got no AC. I, I went to what, Senegal, like, four or five years ago. Uh-huh. They had no ACs, and <laughs> shit was hot. <laughs> and, like, you were sweating without your stuff on already. Yeah. And so, like, when I had to put my stuff on and start moving around, uh-huh. you're just drenched. Yeah. And then the worst part, like, I don't know, it's hard to find the balance. And sometimes, like, you know, we're competing, so, like, you want to blast the AC. Uh-huh. But then it's, like, if it's too cold and if you don't have your stuff on, like, you get so cold, right? Because you're sweating and then that goes cold. Yeah, you got to stay warm. So you got to, like, find the perfect temperature at the venue like this feels good on my nipples i'm not gonna like I, it's uh, silky because you're, you're talking about if it was too cold my nipples would probably like 
Um, cause you know how runners, they put tape over their nipples cause of the chafing. Yeah. Dude, this uniform has zero chafing. I could already tell. I got very sensitive nipples <laughs> and my nips are telling me this thing is pro nipple. Yeah. For sure. I didn't think it has that kind of protection, but. Dude, is this thing fireproof? We can test it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried it. We could try. Yo, you said you were saying like you, you wore this thing for like 25 years. Well, not exactly that one because that would be gross but yeah like the same outfit kind of like uh uh-huh. yeah how, how often do you like change this out it's like each season sort of um i get new stuff like like every year and okay. the old stuff will become like training stuff did you train in this when you were training for the 2020 tokyo olympics so that one so i keep my training and competition separately okay but that one i competed oh. that one i used for the tokyo olympics got so, so you could on and, the mask right there. And you're letting my ass wear this thing? <laughs> dude, I feel... I'm honored that you're wearing I it. I feel honored. No. Dude. Yeah. So this, so this took the chinching hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> one. That one. <laughs> That's a famous chinching hit right there. Damn, dude. I'm wearing the... Oh, man. And yo. I could flick your chinching with this and we can, you know, then you know how it felt like. Dude, give me like a little, like, like a, like a, like a little flick. Just like I don't know how to. F- just give me like the little one. I don't. Okay, so. Like, so I, hold on. Just like, like a, a flick. Like show me your tech. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, that felt that felt better than I thought. <laughs> that, that almost felt good. I might I might pick up fencing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sweet dude, I'm already falling in love with fencing. Yo, what's uh? Before, I want to talk about your career, and. Like how you got to where you are right now, because it's a fucking sweet story. Um, I want to ask about the gear a little bit. What's this called? What's this thing? It's called mask. Oh, word. So, yeah, that's okay. boring, but mask. Yeah. Saber, uh, saber mask. Saber. Everything mask. is saber. So okay. the sport, the weapon I do is saber. So everything goes into the saber category. And I'm probably speaking for everyone here. Is it saber or sabre? Uh, or Japanese sabre. Saburu? Saburu. Nihongo saburu. Nihongo saburu. Saburu jan. Saburu. Saburu. Okay. All right, sweet. Yo, see, that's what the Dan Wilson Tokyo <laughs> podcast is all about. You just learned how to say the saber in Japanese. What is it, Kai? Saburu. I don't. I don't want to test your your fencing knowledge, but uh, where are where are the origins of fencing? I'm not a historian in uh-huh. fencing, but. I know the, <laughs> I just do it, you know. Um, but so fencing is uh, a French sport. Oh, dude! Word. So uh, in French, it's called escrime. Cause yo, on on guard is French. So all so, the sorry, so right? all the all the vocab, tango right, uh-huh. um, is in French. So when the referee says like, "Ready, set, go," it's <sighs> it's play uh, en guard, play ale. So it's like. Ready, set, go, but in French. Oh, word. But when you fence in America, it was like, all right, ready, go. So in, <laughs> it, so in, in the U.S., it'll be ready, fence. Oh, really? But all the internet. like, on your marks, get, get set, set, go. <laughs> America. <laughs> they should change it. I think that would have been way better. Word. But yeah, so everything's in French because uh-huh. it's a French sport. It originated in France. Uh-huh. Um. But saber, mm. sabre, is technically. See, I don't want someone to come at me, but it came from Hungary. Uh huh. And the reason why, so all the so fencing has three different weapons. Uh huh. Um. Wait, so, what? Yeah. Like, there's the saber. So saber, what I do? Okay. There's foil. Oh shit! Okay. Furude in Japanese. Okay, I lay that down when I microwave my pizza. <laughs> Actually, I don't, cause I'll, no, no, I, I don't do that. I've broken a few of my friends' microwaves. Yeah, oven. Parties. You got to use oven, not a microwave. My man. Um, And an epe. Okay. So there's three. I don't know foil. So this is saber. This is saber. I don't know foil and epe. So foil and epe is like all of them are completely different weapons, different targets, different rules. Which weapon is the one where you attack the chinching? <laughs> uh. Epe is the <laughs> oh, Epe and foil you can both attack the chin chin oh, technically. Okay, okay, word. And so it. Saber is the only one you can hit the chin chin, but I still got hit in the chin chin. Oh, okay, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, sorry, you were going on. Uh, tell me about the foil and the epic. So, yeah, sorry, before I so yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't know there's uh -huh. three different weapons. Yeah. So, it's almost like three different sports. Oh, shit. Sure. And okay. you, I mean, you can do more than one, but to be at like a high level, like Olympic athlete or national team, you can only really focus on one. Uh -huh. So, imagine like, so it's like track and field, right? You have the 100 meter dash, uh -huh. runner, um, uh, 400, and say long distance. Mm hmm. Technically, you run so you can do all of them. Mm -hmm. But spe to be the top, the best of the best, you focus on one. Uh huh. Um, there's never been someone that does did the Olympics in both. There has been someone close, but never both. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, you just focus on one. I ended up doing saber. Um, saber is the fastest one, so you would. Kind oh of, yeah, bro! It's the coolest one, the fastest one. So you would say it's like the hundred meter dash. Hell yeah! Um, that's that. It's an easy way to understand that. Nice. Okay. And then also for an epic, you could only poke. <laughs> you can't slash. Saber you can slash. That's so cool. All right. You can shank and slash. Oh, dude, shanking's awesome. Um, yeah. So what was I saying before? You're pretty much on the national team for like shanking. That's how good you are, dude. Oh, in prison you would kill it, dude. But okay, just like, I, I I've had that question a lot. How, how, like if someone like pulled a knife on me mm -hmm. and I had a knife too, like would you win? Yeah. And so fencing, it's like my goal is to get the point like as fast as possible, right? Hit you fast as possible. Uh huh. I'm never there to hurt you. Oh. Right. Okay. I don't want to hurt the guy. Okay. Um. So if we had a knife, mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident I could nick you mm -hmm. before you nick me. Uh huh. But is it gonna be deadly? Oh. Probably not. I see. So I, I'll make you bleed right away. Uh huh. But you might get a good shank in. So it's like, I don't know. I see. I'm You're not. I'm not ready to test that theory yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're built for speed. Word, word. So okay. yeah. But like, you do have experience holding like kind of like a a shankish thing and like doing shank motion. So, <laughs> you know. Hopefully that's it's like, Hopefully I can nick you in the right spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hit like one of the big arteries. <laughs> my carotid and just make me bleed out real quick. So, yeah, I think I was saying, like, so Sabre originated kind of in Hungary. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, so Sabre's target is waist up. Okay. So Sabre's above the ching ching. Okay. Uh -huh. So everything waist up besides the hands. Uh -huh. So mask, arm, everything. Uh -huh. And the reason why is um, it kind of originated on, hor like, sword fighting on horseback. Like, oh, ho riding on horses, right? Uh-huh. And I don't know if it's, like, when they had it as, like, a sport, but when they're doing that, the horse was off target. Like, you're not supposed to hit the horse. You're uh -huh. only supposed to hit the person. Yeah. And where is the leg? It's kind of where the, oh, the yeah. horse is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only thing that's coming above the horse is waist up. I see. And so that kind of transition, where Sabre transitioned from. That's what I've heard. Word. I might be totally wrong. And kind of, yo, how how you stand, too. It's got that bow leg. Like, the horse could still be in there. <laughs> you, know, you know I'm talking about? The space. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like standing. Yeah, yeah. Word, word. So it's from there up. Okay. I didn't know that. Sick. Yeah. I haven't really ridden a horse. Sort of I have, but not really. <laughs> what but, do you mean sort of I have? <laughs> like, I don't you sort of ride a horse? I mean, I've been on one, but not, like, really ride one. Word, word, word. Right? I see. It was like the first time, like I lost my virginity too. Like, it it sort of like, happened, but not really. Like, it, like, like I put it in, but it was like so limp, and it just kind of was just like, <laughs> and like a ball may have like gone in there, and I'm not even sure. Like, it didn't go. It wasn't like full like penetration. It was just kind of like flopping like in in and out, and I was like, do I count that? But did I, you I, like, did, did you finish? I, um, I don't I don't think I finished. I don't think it counted. <laughs> it didn't count. Damn it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's how I think where fencing originated. Fr technically, France, but saber is kind of more in Hungary horse fighting. I guess I don't know. Uh -huh. um, hopefully, I'm correct, but that's what I've been told. Now, uh, when you train with the Japan national team, do you train with like the foil members and the uh, ep epme? Epe. Epe. Absolutely not. I mean, they're there, right? Uh -huh. We're kind of, we sometimes like similar practice times, but we're separately training. We're training separately. We have our own coach. Oh, word. They have their own coach. 
Um, it's legit a different sport. Yeah. It's like track and field or gotcha. if you think of yeah. fighting, right? Um, you have boxers, you have kickboxing, you have like MMA fighting. Okay. So there's some similarities in our movements, but it's different strategies, different rules. Gotcha. Um, different equipment. Yeah. Um, so, dude, I actually wanted to ask you, uh, you, you grew up in America, right? USA, baby. Yeah, USA number one, NASCAR, monster trucks, and bald eagles, dude. Do I, do I like, represent where I'm from? Like, not just America, like, not not even California. I say, like, yeah, go deep. NorCal, go deep. Bay Area, uh -huh. Redwood City, the uh -huh. 650. There we go. <laughs> I saw your recent, like, uh, what was it? short podcast i don't know you're talking about the whole representing thing yeah dude my my aikata my comedy partner yeah. Yuki. like we were on the pod and uh she, like i was just talking about my hometown she's like where are you from i'm like from arizona like phoenix az like full radio holla at your boy <laughs> and i was like so today it's she's like whoa 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 we can't just continue the conversation yeah japanese people uh yeah they don't they don't represent like yeah me, i gotta represent river c you yeah. know i lived there for 10 plus years you know that's my hometown Dude, that's what's up. And uh, six five zero. Oh. Dude, li for real, for real. How did fencing start? How, how I don't know how you get started in it. Um, I, I was like, actually was born in Japan. Oh shit! So nice. lived here until seven. Uh huh. And growing up, like even in Japan, I was playing a bunch of different sports. So like, actually, baseball was my first sport, and karate. Okay. So I had some kind that's of so that's so Japanese, right? Two of the most Dude, Japanese things. Baseball and karate right. are two of the most <laughs> Japanese sports you could do. Yeah, you know, you you put in like swimming too. Right? Everyone did swimming. Yeah, right? but yeah, it's, it's not. Bad. That's more like for fun. You and, know? and you ride like the unicycle at lunch. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, Japanese pe like like kids, they all know how to ride the unicycle for yeah. some reason. Uh, they couldn't afford the second wheel <laughs> after after a lot of hardship. It's, it's, so, it's hard times, man. Yo, dog. I remember when I got my first bicycle and I was like, what was it? It's first grade and I was you stoked. Were, you were like, what is this? You just sliced it in half yeah. for, for you to figure out how to play with it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is this? Two wheels. Why'd you give me two wheels? Give me one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. So you're in Japan until you were seven? So yeah. So when I moved to the States uh for was city mm -hmm. to be exact yeah um i st baseball stayed around because i love baseball that was my first love and karate kind of got chopped um, Ooh, look at that big kai <laughs> with the puns um maybe I like because it. i didn't we didn't have a karate dojo in Rose City, <laughs> <laughs> yo, the sh dude, the strip mall. I guarantee you, there's like a Rex Kwon Do type of like. But yeah, once I saw a white sensei, I was like, hell no. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> it has uh, to be a Japanese sensei. Not today, Richard. Um, but yeah, so I picked up actually basketball, like American football, mm. and you know my older brother did the same sport, and we were you know we we're like one of the better players on each team, but we we're in a different you know age group, mm. and I think my family saw that like. I was starting to get known as my older brother's little brother. Okay. Like, cause you know he was like a superstar on my his team. I, mean, I was, I was a, I was. I don't want to be cocky, but I was the best one on my team. Uh -huh. But still, when you have an older brother and he's really good, you, you people, get compared. Yeah, cause we're on like the same town team, right? But just yeah. different age groups. And plus, I enjoyed playing with like. This might sound sexual, but like toy swords. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, but like, too, light, light, like lightsabers like oh. like plastic katanas and all that kind of stuff like every kid like boys love playing with swords right dude yeah like you, imaginary fighting or you f fight with your friends your all siblings day. you get it like yeah. a half chub and, <laughs> and you uh you put a flashlight on the wall and you and you play <laughs> with a half chubbed out wiener a little sword fight with your friends and yeah you I, the, the I think we play different sword fighting but you didn't do Nah. <laughs> Where? Damn, that must be a Phoenix thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a Phoenix thing. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so my family saw that and was like, I mean, if you're going to do that, let's do something useful with your you know, hobby. Mm -hmm. You like sports. You like playing with swords. Mm -hmm. And there was like a fencing program in Redwood City. Oh, shit. And they were like, why don't you try it? And you give a kid a sword yeah. and you say, hey, you get to whack this kid and you get points. Uh-huh. Who's not going to love it? Man, dude, your parents are awesome. When I, like, brought sticks inside and was playing, my parents were just like, take that shit outside. <laughs> <'Cause> they <laughs> yelled at me. 
Yo, you got signed up for like, yo, this kid's got potential. I wouldn't know what fencing. I had no idea what fencing was. Uh huh. You know, I enjoyed watching like, Star Wars and sword fighting. Like every like cartoon or anime character, I always was like following the guy with the sword. Ah, uh, that was my thing. Like I love any character with a sword. So they're like, okay, he likes swords. Uh huh. Put him in a sport that has swords. And yeah, like if you're Japanese, you would do what kendo. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have that in like a small town. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, there's like a small fencing program. Mm-hmm. Man, I fell in love with this so fast. Like, and I was like really good. Like, I got good fast. So when you add success and you're having fun. Oh, dude. That's like. That's fuel. The, the, the perfect recipe, right? Dude. So, you know, I started local tournaments and I started doing national tournaments. And I started fencing at eight, but I was number one. At, when I was 10 years old, I was number one in the nation at 10 years old. Oh, you were just killing it. I won, like, the national championship at, y, like, the Y10. Oh, yeah. And so it's like my parents saw that and like, okay, this might be your future. And then they learned that, like, you can get a scholars- a higher chance of getting a scholarship in uh-huh. fencing compared to, like, baseball, basketball, or any other sport. Word. This percentage is, like, drastic. And one of the things I do remember from our drunken conversation is, dude— he won the NCAA national championships for fencing at Penn State. Yeah. Which is like, for Japanese people, they're like, yeah, whatever. But like, as an American, like, you're just like, yo, do you want NCAA like a national champion, <laughs> like your junior year for me? I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, if you tell a Japanese person, like, oh, I'm an NCAA champion, they're like, NC, NCAA. NCAA. What is that? And even if you explain to them, like, college championship, they're like, oh, that's cool. Like, nothing, like, really hits. But I guess, you know, I remember, like, Dude. after winning it and I tell people or, like, someone tells them that I won. And so they're like, what the hell? Yeah, dude. Um, college sport, okay, college yo, sports is huge. Dude, it's like it's like professional sports level, like, hype in America. Yeah. There's but so yeah. much money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. sick. Did, yeah. do, wait, did, did you get a ring? Do those, Does fencing get the... Oh, I should have brought the ring. National championship? Yeah, I haven't here. I mean, I haven't... T- Tokyo, yeah, I should have brought it. Word. I should just... It's kind of big and heavy. It's... You, you want to you wanna know uh, <laughs> something? Like, after you saying this, what I'm about to say uh, sounds kind of lame, but I have a D- NCAA Division II National Championship <laughs> ring. Hey! That's still pretty impressive, dude. Dude, and uh, I think they are fat, dude. Yeah. And I have mine too somewhere, but I'm not gonna get that. We're out. both NCAA um, champions, dog. Uh, yeah. Don't even say Div you're... Two. Just say you're NCAA <laughs> champion. You got a big ring. I got a big ring. Word. Yeah. Does it just say like streets on it, like on the side? Uh, either the side or the inside, something like that. Oh yeah. Yo, any of your homies from that Penn State team like still fence at a like the same level you do, like you know, on a national team level or anything? Or, um. That team that won, no. But after years after, when I was still at Penn State, mm-hmm. there's one guy. He's you know former roommate. Mm-hmm. We used to fence on the U.S. team together. He he went to Tokyo too. Wait, you were on the U.S. team too? Yeah, I was on the U.S. Uh, junior team. And then you s- switched. Okay. During college, I switched. Benedict Arnold over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking traitor <laughs> to the American dude. You traded a NASCAR. For a Jin Diksha. For a... For a... Fuck, what's Jin Diksha? Uh, a Ford to uh, Toyota, you know? Yo, you traded in the Ford for a Nissan? But the Nissan runs longer, you know? <laughs> the Ford's going to break down after a couple of years. All right. You're tr- right, right. For sure, for sure. But no, I, my, my friends always joked about that. Like, oh, you traitor, you traitor. Yeah. The moment I made the Olympics, they're like, oh, that's sweet, dude. Like, <laughs> they're back on my team. They, they go to Ancestry.com and see if like, they have some blood. <laughs> they're like, yo, uh, my dad was like half, uh, half Senegalese. <laughs> yeah, so I have one, like, former teammate. From Penn State, uh, shout out to Andrew Maskevich. Okay, word. Uh, Mac Woods, if you want to say in English. Mac Woods. Yeah, he, he went to Tokyo Olympics. Mac Woods. Um, yeah, he's still fencing. I think he's trying to go for Paris, just like me. Are you? So you're in qualifications right now for the 2024. Yeah. Summer so, Olympics in Paris. Yeah. So this summer, 2024, <laughs> the next Olympics in Paris, and yeah, the qual. I have the. I've been in qualifications so since last April to uh march 2024 so it's all about about like a year 
Um, that's like the whole qualification process. Uh-huh. And I have what, what, three more months? Uh-huh. Four competition to be exact. Uh-huh. So end of March, I know if I'm going to Paris or not. End of, dude, that's pretty soon. That's, yeah, it's pretty soon, yeah. That's super soon. How are you doing in qualifications right now? So. H- how you doing? It's kind of hard to ex- explain in details, but I'll, you know, simplify it. Uh, if the qualification ended today uh-huh. or tomorrow, you would say, uh-huh. technically I don't go to the Olympics. So we're playing catch up right now, but it's oh, close. Shit. Okay. Fencing, the Olympics, the hardest part is qualifying. Once you get in, uh-huh. it's technically an easier competition because it's, it's, it's like university in Japan. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get in, but once it, you're in, you just party, right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not. <laughs> I mean, you could party. Yeah, it's a fun party time, but okay. Um, the competition at the Olympics is smaller because it's limited people. So technically, the competition is easier. I mean, obviously, it's higher stress level and pressure, but uh-huh. since it's smaller, it's technically easier. But anyway, um, to qualify, the top four teams in the world ranking automatically goes. Okay. And then top four. That's very little. But then, so there's only eight spots. Uh huh. So top four goes, so that's half. And then, so where does the other four come from? Will be the next best zone teams. So next best Asian team, next best European team, next best uh, African team, next best American, you know. Uh huh. South American. South American, yeah. Okay. Team gets to go. And right now, the top four in the world is for men's saber, is Korea. Hungary, uh-huh. I think U.S., and I think it's like France or Italy. And so th- who's the next best Asian team? Right now, if you're looking strictly at the world ranking, yeah, Iran is number seven and Japan is number eight. Oh, okay. So all we have to do is surpass Iran. Okay. It doesn't have to be we have to be top eight in the ranking. It's just if Iran is... 15th we have to be 14th if they're, if they're sixth, we have to be fifth as, as long as we're ahead of iran we get to get the olympics i see is there is there a third team that's like close to underneath japan yeah china okay so china is nine so it's iran japan china okay but the, really the, the, the gap is between iran and japan is the closest okay. in terms of the points i see and so we are technically behind and we are playing catch up uh-huh. but there's still a chance and yeah, I believe in my team. We're very strong. Mm-hmm. We prefer defense Iran because, you know, we want to be responsible yeah, to want, beat them. Or if they beat us, you know, they earned it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's like the, you know, situation I'm at. Okay. Um, it's fun, but it's very stressful. Dude. But that's part of the competition, right? You got to go earn it. That's wild, man. The caliber of conversation you just talked about was like... You're just talking about like beating the other country's best fencers, and um, I'm I'm a, I'm a little wet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? Like uh, I got a I got a little chub. Yeah, I mean that kind of my, my foil <laughs> my foil turned into a saber. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. nothing. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. I, 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 I was, uh, but you always have a saber. You're not a foil guy. You're a saber guy. You, you haven't seen me midwinter. <laughs> it's the uh, uh, what, what's the what's the ep- is Epe small? I mean, they're all like long, like same length. Oh, okay. But Epe technically has a thickest girth of okay. the blade. I'm definitely not an Epe. <laughs> Maybe I'm, foil. I'm foil for sure. <laughs> Where I'm, I'm foil type. Foil type. Yeah. 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 Okay. But yeah, it kind of, you know, I've been doing this for so long. It kind of goes over my head that like, you know, the people I'm competing against, they're the best of the best in their country, right? Mm. And um, no, that's always so fun. It's like. I want to beat the best. Hell yeah! And you know, you gotta have like that I don't know. It's like I get so excited. Like if I have a matchup and I have to fence like the better guys, the top ranked guys, uh-huh. I actually get more excited. It's like Woo! it's like let me be the one to beat the guy because it almost feels like I earned like the, the result, right? Yeah, dude. I don't want to draw like a shitty guy and you know win and be like oh because I moved up because you know. The guy was weak. No, I kind of like enjoy fencing the best guys. Uh huh. That's and the so. mentality you gotta have for sports, dog. Yeah, for sure. And I always think like, I think, you know, I gotta thank my dad for this. But like, he always said like, no matter your ranking, 
you got to think you're the underdog. Like, you got to go earn it. Mm-hmm. Like, the ranking doesn't mean you won the tournament, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, that's always, no matter what, I always think, like, I'm not, like, uh, underdog. Like, I feel like people, exp- I don't know. It's, it might be a bad mindset, but I might think, like, what people might think I might lose. So let me prove them wrong kind mm-hmm. of mindset. Like, uh, I got to stay hungry. Dude, hearing that, because um, a lot of people, because for comedy, like, you got to, you know, like, my performance time is, like, standing up in front of people and, like, not fucking up my lines and, like, getting laughs and all this. And people ask me, like, little tricks. And, dude, one of mine that you kind of said, like, the underdog thing is I have, like, this weird mentality thing, too, where each time I step up and there's, like, a bunch of other comedians, it's one half of my brain I say I'm the funniest motherfucker in this room. Like to ha- you need to have that oh, type of confidence. Oh, for sure, yeah. But also it's knowing that like I know nothing and I'm not that good. Like yeah. it's that balance of like dude, you have to come out and like fucking try to get the last, but also so being like humbling enough to be like dude, like these guys would like are way yeah, yeah. like like the truth of it or like have more experience and are funnier than me, but yeah. No, that's it's, for it's sure. It sounded similar. Yeah, no, for sure. You got to have the confidence, but you got to go earn it. Yeah. Like, the result. And, yeah, you got to earn everything. Hell yeah, yeah. baby. Um, I want to get the sponsored reads out of the way. Damn, you're big. <laughs> yeah, the you number know. number one podcast in Tokyo. But uh, big homie, actually, that supports this podcast is in Texas. It's like some moving company. Um, I don't read the uh, – the, uh, sponsored reads it's actually the salary man satoshi he's the local salary man that does all the reading um let me let me call him one second hey salary man satosh time to do the sponsored reads oh uh, uh, it's your daniel son kyo no sponsored read yomimasu saruba movers moving across the u.s Ready to move out of the failing nation that is America and into a country that has its shit together, like Japan? <laughs> you said it, Tito. You, you said it, Tito. You said it, Tito. Call Saruba Movers today. We are your international and nationwide moving company. We are located in Texas. Oh! Texas? Every single big guy in Texas, you take Nissan Tacoma, turn into Ford F-150. You take <laughs> Pigeon and turn into Big Bald Eagle. You take tiny Japanese penis and turn into Big American Texas penis. Call 512 596-9696 today to get your moving quote started or visit us at salubamovers.com slash quote and mention promo code Daniel-san to get 5% off your move today. 5%! Oh, it's a lot of savings. Hey, come on! Where can you move from any move? Any move can be moved from salubamovers. 2つ目のスポンサーのリードいきます。プレイクチンプス。ファースト、イージーアンドアフォーデブルブレイクリペア。ブレイクチンプブレイクリペアスペシャライズインブレイクリペアブレイクパッドロータズアンドキャリパーズ
pick him back up to uh pick him back up uh before the sponsored reads dude i want to ask you bro when was the change from u.s national team to japan national team like what happened did did is this a personal choice or did someone approach you what's going on so i kind of started competing for u.s when i was like 15 yeah around 15 i was on like the cadet team which is like the under 17 team okay and then i went to progress to like the u.s junior team okay so i actually represented u.s in 20 2013 junior world championships oh okay so i went to junior world championship for u.s uh-huh um and when i was like you know doing u.s national team and fencing yeah I always kind of like, if I ever went to Olympics, I was gonna. In my head, I was like, "I'll go for for the U.S." Oh yeah. You know, I only fence for the U.S. Mm-hmm. And when I was younger, I kind of went to Japan to compete at their local tournaments, like national competition. Uh-huh. There and there, nothing like crazy, just for fun. Yeah. Um. So they kind of knew who I was. Uh huh. But I never really thought about fencing for Japan because I was like top of my age group in the u.s so mm-hmm. i was like oh if i can make it for u.s why well, switch countries yeah but then like many people in college you usually s- retire from fencing after college because it's a very minor sport amateur sport there's no professional league or anything and uh-huh. you got to make money you got to work okay um, unless you're like olympic medalist champion you don't get really sponsors in the u.s and so i was like well like, am I good enough to go for Olympics for U.S.? Like, um, you know, you start thinking about all that when you're in college. Yeah. And then when I won NCAA, technically I was not, like, not even the closest favorite to win. Like, oh, I was, you was a real underdog. I was a real underdog. It was a true underdog story. Like, my... my, oh, t- my <laughs> You can make a movie. Um, <laughs> but my senpai on my team, who who actually was favorite to win... If someone from Penn State was going to win, it was going to be my teammate, my mentor, my senpai. Uh-huh. But uh, shout out to Adrian Bach. Uh, okay, he's a homie. Right. But, yeah, I ended up winning. And so people were like, I was probably like ranked like, I don't know. So there's only 23 fencers for NCAA for men's saber. Uh-huh. I was ranked like probably 10 or 12. Okay. So that's not really like a high chance of winning. Word. So I ended up winning. And when I won, I was like, maybe I am good enough. Yeah, okay. Right? And... And there was always, like, a little bit of, like, I could have changed nationality and fence for Japan. And actually, like, my first ever, like, Olympic fencing memory was Beijing, t- 2008. Oh, okay. And I actually was watching it in Japan. Oh, dope. In my mom's hometown, Kagoshima. Okay. And I was watching it, a Japanese foil fencer won the medal, Yuki Ota. Oh, so okay. that was like my first like Olympic memory for fencing, uh-huh. and so I was like, oh, like, and I saw like people go crazy over the Olympics in Japan, right? Yeah. I'm like, damn, like you're like a celebrity here in Japan. Like in the U.S., there's such a big country that like there's so many Olympic athletes. Uh huh. Yeah. And Japan, it's like a big deal. And I don't know. I was like, and my mom, you know, who's Japanese, was like, man, like I want you to fence for Japan. That'll be like a big honor. And I was like, man, oh, Japanese geez. people love honor. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yes, they I, do, they I do. Know, but for real, Japanese. They do, they love that. Yeah, honor. yeah. And so I was like, man, that would be kind of cool. And I was like, so that like my mom's factor, and also like, you know, I've been fencing for U.S. and it would have been kind of nice to do a restart, a new journey, new adventure, fencing for a different country. Uh-huh. So that was kind of a factor, and also a big factor was, um, twenty twenty, Olympics. It was going to be in Tokyo. Uh-huh. So I was like, man, how cool would it be if I went to the Olympics as a Japanese athlete uh-huh. in Japan? Yeah. Uh, right? Not and too many athletes get to uh, experience playing in the Olympics when it's in your host country. Yeah. That is that's That's huge. like a once-in-a-lifetime. Yeah. Not even once-in-a-lifetime. Like you, you have to be at your peak athletic career to land that kind of right? – and that's that's – that's a low percentage. And on top of that, for it to be luckily randomly boom, like in your home country. Yeah. yeah. 
And so, Massive opportunity. man, I was like, okay, that aligns, you know, my mom wants me to switch, mm-hmm. you know. And, yeah, so I just, my junior year, I actually took time off from competing nationally or internationally. Mm-hmm. I just focused on collegiate tournament to mm-hmm. think, like, what am I going to do for my fencing career outside of college? Mm-hmm. And after a year, I decided, hey, if I'm going to pursue the Olympics, I'm going to go for for Team Japan. Oh, yeah. And, hey, look, it's not guaranteed I have to earn my spot for Team Japan. It's not like my results or my resume from the U.S. automatically gives me a spot on the Japanese team. No, I had to do the Japanese competition, oh, earn my spot. Okay. It, you know, the Japanese coaches still wanted to see if I can compete with their best guys. Okay. I thought the Japan coach would jump on your saber real quick. Oh, hell like, no. They were like, oh, no, you got to earn it. Oh, sick. Yeah. That's and cool. So that's fine. That's the mentality I want. And yeah. I went to do all the domestic Japanese tournaments, you know, did well at the domestic tournaments. So, you know, I earned a spot on the national team. And then even even if you're on the national team, it doesn't mean that you're on the Olympic team, right? You got to go earn the international ranking and all that. And my actually the current coach for Team Japan, he was assistant coach at Penn State. Wait, what? Damn, sick. So I, I got to know him. but he So he's a current coach. He became a coach... Um, after Tokyo Olympics, so oh. he, so he wasn't the coach when I went to Tokyo. Yo, he knows the he knows the American Kai though. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. He knows the Penn State Kai he too. He knows so the Penn State. So he, he knows damn, them. and he let you on the team. <laughs> so he was assistant coach. Um, so that's when I got to know him. Uh-huh. Shout out to my current coach, Jerome Goot. Sick. Um, he he's a big fan of yours too, actually. <laughs> he actually is. He actually loves you. And like, no way. Uh, that's such an honor. He, Sweet dude. He uses your videos for studying Japanese too. So awesome, dude. He's got a. Uh, Yo, I'm pumped. I hope he checks this out. Yeah, he po- probably will. He's, Sweet. He wants you to come to the training center, actually. <laughs> no way. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I was Yo. like, I don't know if you can get him in, but he's like, no, no, we'll get him in. I was like, oh, okay. Hell yeah. So maybe okay. we, we need to figure that out. So for you to come to the, the fencing practice hall. Dude, I'm going for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh. Anyway, so he, when the current coach, when he was at Penn State, he left after my sophomore year to start his own fencing club. Mm-hmm with another former Penn State guy in New Jersey. And so when I graduated, I was like, man, like, I need a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, and who do I, like, I kind of, like, did, like, trial or, like, kind of, like, interviewing coaches in the East Coast. Uh-huh. Like, who's fit, who fits my style. Like, I want someone that, like, gives me, I don't want to sound like, a, you know, a girly girl, but, like, attention to, like, focus on me getting better. Because, you know, if I go to other clubs, maybe they, he has other students. Uh-huh. They might not prioritize me. <laughs> so, I know. I need, you know, I'm training training for the Olympics. So, uh-huh. and Jerome, and he was like, hey, like, I'd love to work with you. And he already knew who I was, knew my style from Penn State. So, I was like, hey, it's going to work out. Yeah. And he also had, a, there was another coach there, too. Um, and so, I had two coaches there. And so I stayed there for two years, New Jersey, New York, trained both areas. And after two years, that's when I moved to Japan in mm-hmm. 2018. Because um, my mindset was two years before the Olympics, I uh, moved to Japan, just kind of adjust to the living style here. And also actually kind of like train with the Japanese team. Yeah. Get re- get ready for the Tokyo Olympics with the team, kind of build, like have a team bonding. Yeah. Did you, did you gel with them real quick or how, how was that gelling with the Japanese team? Um, it's hard, you know, I would say it's not necessarily their fault too, but like, it's kind of hard. I didn't speak the best Japanese and our cultural differences. And also like me joining a team is kind of like, I'm taking someone's spot too. For sure. So there's kind of, we're I like, see. we're competing against each other and we're still competing together. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest part. And so they were friendly, but like. Also, like, first two years, I was still not in Japan. So, I only meet them at competitions. Okay. So, it was very brief, and it's they were nice, but, like, you know, I'm still... Also, like, my Japanese wasn't the best, so it's, like, there's some barriers, cultural understandings. Um, You know how it is, Japan. Like, you got to talk differently to different levels of age and... <laughs> sepi- right? The Keigo game. Keigo game, right? And so I didn't understand game. that. And yeah. so... The old coach, I'll talk in like, like a tomodachi. Yeah, yeah. And they they still make fun of me for that, you know. Now, I, no, I've changed. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, you know, thank you know, but thanks to that culture though, those are like a lot of my f- initial jokes. I go, I find the highest ranking comedian and I talk to him as I talk like to a, like a child. Yeah, 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 you get a gaijin card. It's okay. Yeah, dude. I used to use it's that my, too. It's my first. It's an easy laugh. I like that one. But, but yeah, um, and that comes in with my mentality too. Is like, even if they didn't like me or they didn't accept me, my focus was to get good results in the fencing competition. Mm. Like I'm here to find success on my own like i'm not gonna i'm gonna be nice to them yeah. but i don't need them to be like best friends yeah yeah i'm trying to like that was my mindset like i don't give a shit about what you think of me uh-huh. i'm gonna compete i'm gonna earn my spot and if you don't like me that's fine you're gonna like me for my results kind uh-huh. of um so yeah i didn't take it personal or anything and but now it's like ever since i moved to japan you know i'm with them tw- more often yeah. every day so we've gotten a lot closer and especially now, like, the team is, like, we have a very strong team, not just, like, talent-wise, but as a, I guess you would say team bonding or friendship. Oh, sweet. The team is younger, too, so they have a lot, lot more fun. And so... You're, uh, yo, you're one of the older guys? Dude, I'm, like, the, I'm, the, I'm the senpai now. You were senpai? Dude, the Shit. Tokyo Olympics, I was on the team, the Tokyo Olympic team, I was the youngest. Uh-huh. And literally after the Olympics happened... I became, like, the second oldest or the third oldest. Oh, word. Like, it switched. So, for this Paris one, you're going to be, like, one of the leaders. I'm, right? like, the veteran, you know? Oh, you the vet. you the you big... I got to give him the veteran knowledge, you know? Yeah, dude. The young kids Don't get hit up. in the dick, you dude. know? Unless you want to go viral. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to be remembered at the at the Olympics. Yo, real quick about the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, did you sleep in those, like, anti-sex cardboard beds? I, I read, like, a thing about that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. They're not anti-sex, but they are cardboard. I, I tested it out. I, ju- I mean, how, I didn't, okay. how many times have you had sex on cardboard? <laughs> I didn't test out as in, like, sex, but, like, I jumped on the bed. It was firm. <laughs> I mean, it worked. It was, you 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 went through the motions. Yeah, I went through the motion. I jumped on, like, a trampoline, uh-huh. and it, it stays... You know, constructed and stable. Okay. Um, but it was like, again, like, people were, like, saying, like, oh, like, Olympics, like, there's so many partying, like, sex, <laughs> that, blah, blah, blah. No, not for mine because it was during corona. Oh, Everyone was kind of like, we we had to get, we had to put in our test samples every day. Uh, and yeah, the moment yeah. you test a positive, you're out. That's and so, so scary. And so, yeah. And there's... When you're at the village in the village, like you're hearing these athletes get testing positive and all this, and it's like, fuck, I need to be safe. Yeah, and man. So everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's like only mingling around their own team. Yeah. Not necessarily even their country, just their own team. Damn. Um, so it's like, yeah, I feel like I didn't get the full Olympic experience, but man, it was still a surreal, ex- you know, yeah, moment and experience for sure. It's still an experience, man. Even though right now it's like, oh man, it wasn't what you was imagining, but you know. Later down the road, you're like, yo, remember that, like, the Olympics I got, like, kind of canceled, put off for a year? Because it was yeah. actually in 2021. Yeah. Technically, right? I'm just happy it happened. I'm proud of you, man. That's that's awesome. Yo, um, on that note, can we, uh, can we touch tips real quick? Which ones? <laughs> this one right here. The Sabres. Mine's a little crooked because it's been used. That's nice. I like that. I just really wanted to touch tips with you before... Yeah. Um, finish this pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you said yours is crooked. Yeah. Um, mine goes a little to the left. So this one's this one. Oh yeah, this. Then you have to hold this one. This one's kind of like used and beat up. I really want. This is like the ghetto one. Oh wait, wait. Oh, I know. I know. Some people are only listening, which is a shame. And also, if you're honestly just listening, uh, to this episode, you need to watch the video because, son, I'm decked out. In Olympic gear, <laughs> I'm holding a saber. I'm done this whole podcast with the hot mask on, with the yeah. beehive, with the beekeeper mask. You're working hard. I um, gotta watch you. Wait, wait. So what? Uh, this one's shiny. This one's shiny. This is like unused. Like, oh, word. It's never like this shiny. Like this one right here. Yeah. This is what I use for like competing and like practice. It's like all scratched up. Oh. And it's like ghettoed out. On the with the taping to keep it attached a little bit. You but guard you guard with this little shield that's near the what do you call this the hilt? This is the uh, guard. Okay. Right? Um, and so yeah, it kind of covers your hand. Word. So you use this to block. I mean, you can use a blade to block too, but this is the main area to block. Oh really? Just like. So you kind of turn each way, change positions. Oh sweet. 
This is, this is straight up saber. Yeah, this is a saber. Dude, some first time holding all this equipment. This, dude. What do you think? Is it heavy for you? Is it light? Did, I, you, did you think it was gonna be heavier? I thought it was gonna be heavier. Okay. It's pretty light, dude. Like, the the base, like where you hold, is kind of heavy. But like, you know. So yeah, people say, "Oh, it's this light," but then it's like when you start have to be precise and qu- moving quick. Yeah. People like v- move very choppy. Uh huh. But like, the thing is, like, I'm sure you're supposed to use your fingers, especially like these three fingers, like your thumb and two fingers, to oh, kind of like control the blade. Oh no way, dude! And because you want to be, that's... you want to be moving the tip. That's the fastest part you want to move. Okay. Not necessarily the guard. I see. Cause yeah, it, 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 it's it's flexible, right? I've yeah. Se- I feel like I've seen still shot frames where like it's fucking like bent, almost like a oh, yeah, horseshoe. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's so, flexible enough, and so that means like, whoa. Okay. So it won't. Yeah, you can. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It won't break. Whoa, Sometimes it breaks at... after long use, but yeah. Uh-huh. And it, you need to have it bendy because when you poke, uh-huh. if it doesn't bend, it's gonna break, right? Oh, dude! Imagine your chin chin getting hit by a, one of those that didn't bend. It had like no give. It just. Well, I think it, it, one that flicked me didn't. Really, I mean, it flicked, so it bent it. But like, <laughs> it would have been cool if it broke. Cause then it's like, oh, I have a strong chin chin. Dude, right? yo, not it, the man of steel, the chin chin yeah, of steel. Yeah, dude. I wish it broke. Dude, sweet man. Oh. But yeah, people. You know, I feel not a lot of people get to hold a saber or a fencing like sword. So yeah, I like try to bring it around sometimes. <laughs> just the house party. Yeah, yeah. Just to the just to the izakaya. You know. Izakaya. Um. You know, I hate to ask, but uh, can you give me like one little uh flick of the ching ching with the saber, like just just a little one? I want like know. me. You want to stand up and give you a flick? Yeah, just just like. Because you said, like, you know. Yeah, I'll give you a poke and a slash. How about that? <laughs> Two different types. A, a poke and a slash. Or like a, sh- you could say shank and a you know, slice or something. Two different. You got, your, your, your winky got slashed or uh, shanked? It was like a flick. <laughs> it was like <laughs> that's not even one of the moves when you when you describe the difference between Ooh, sabers. Okay, so I think he, he said he okay. could slash. He, he went, What's a flick? He he went for like a you call it like a cut or like a like a like a he went kind of like a low cut, right? Yeah. But the thing was like he was the distance was you know a cut would be like you hit with the blade like boom like this, uh-huh. right? He was in a distance that, like, only the tip kind of hit. Uh-huh. So it was more like a flick. <laughs> it was, like, a f- like, barely hit. But that that means it was, like, a lot of, like, um, just, just momentum and, like, speed. It was, like, boom, like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so it kind of it stung more. Uh-huh. So it wasn't, like, when you get hit like this, maybe it's, like, you would describe it as a punch. Uh-huh. But when it's, like, a flick, it's more like a slap. Oh, it it was literally like one of your boys, like in the locker room, like flicking your wiener. Yeah, but, but it flicked the whole thing. <laughs> like, there was a lot of momentum and torque. Yeah, and no, torsion. it was. Yeah, it was like perfectly timed and perfectly angled uh-huh. to get this flick. Uh huh. That's what I figured, because like the way it felt, you know. Yeah. It stung. Where? So I think it did sting. Oh yeah, for sure. I was there any party that was kind of like like, you know. We could do this again, maybe. But. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen often that you get hit in the dick. Like, and then to, for it to be like that painful, I was like, oh, wow, oh, this is kind of funny. Like, and, and the and the venue that it happened at. Yeah, exactly. The, the moment, the competition, and the also Olympics, dude. And then the guy who did it was like a good friend of mine. He was a U.S. Uh, fencer. He he was on the U.S. I'm junior com- U.S. junior team together. We're all together. So I've known him since like we're twelve. I'm, 12. Yo, that's a bro move. I'm convinced he was just like, yo, what's up, my dude? Like this little <laughs> little chin ching flick. You know how we do in the yeah, locker yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, a friendly little flick. On that note, um, yeah. So you want let me, to yeah, let me unguard unguard my chin ching real quick. Okay, maybe you gotta get the camera higher up so when we stand, huh? It's just a probably oh, probably a. Like I don't, I don't want it too crazy. Cause are, are we in frame, Hito? Yeah. Kinda. I mean, your face. Kinda. Uh, kinda. Okay, I'll stand. But, I'll stand. Do you like think? This. Yeah, I like that. If I, I might need to stand up to actually give you a, like a, like a decent piece. flick or a poke. Okay. Yeah. Cause um, I, I can't control it like sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um. I can stand up. I, how 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 far can you see? Can you see here? Yeah, I can see that. You can see this. Okay. 
Okay, we're far away from the mics. We're far, but um, I, I want to get a little taste of the of the Olympic flick. Okay. The Olympic bro flick. Okay, so the first one, I'm, I'm not gonna flick you the first one, but this is like the angle he came in at like the Olympics. So he kind of just went like this way, right? Oh, so I can't. So it's just... <laughs> not too bad <laughs> so far. Kimuchi, right? Uh-huh. But so. What usually happens is I like, have to talk kind of loud into that. Oh, sorry. So, most common way of getting a hidden dick is like kind of like a poke. Uh, so it will be like, boom. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I might have actually hit you pretty hard. My bad. Um. <laughs> you know when you're you're chinching and your balls hang to the side, you hit like part of the ball sack. Like you didn't hit the chinching, you hit like the webbing of the bat wing. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Okay. That's so, the poke. That's the... <laughs> okay, so it's going to... Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, it just... <laughs> yo, this... Yo! It's hard yo. It's hard because, like, I don't aim for that down there, you know? I, I know. But, yo, you're on the Oli- you're on the Olympic fencing team. If you can't slash a chin chin, yo, you're not making the squad. Let's go. This is for Paris. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I got your thigh a little bit. Oh! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My man's going to Paris. <laughs> On guard, dog. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Um, that's uh, really all I wanted to call you over to do was to uh, <laughs> let me feel the wrath of the, the flick, the Tokyo, the, the famous Tokyo chinching flip, flick. <laughs> how, how I felt during the Tokyo Olympics, right? Yeah. I got a taste of it. Yeah. No. Not maybe too, maybe you'll bad. go viral too. Though. Not too bad, I like it. <laughs> but uh, Kai, thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, I'm gonna come watch your competition. Everyone else listening, um, please check out my boy Kai. Where where can we find you? What's your uh, what's your handles and stuff, my guy? Uh huh. So I do TikTok, Instagram, sort of YouTube. I'm trying to get back into it again. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, mostly I'm active on TikTok. And Instagram, you can just follow me on Kaito Streets. Yeah, just put my name. Right here, baby. Yeah, streets, like the road, like, the, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, and I'll put the, uh, your ats, your your links. Uh, no, I appreciate it. On yeah. The, on the podcast information. So everyone, big shout out to my boy Kaito Streets. Go check him out. Go support him when he's uh sabering it up. And uh, yeah. Check my boy out. Thanks for coming out, Kaito. Oh, thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. I, I want to go to your show, like Dude. comedy show. Hell yeah, you will. And I'm going to come check you out. And we're going to uh, get you to Paris. Let's it's gonna do be it. Sweet. Let's do it. All right, thanks, man. Peace out.